I tell you, if if you don't mind me, can I go down that road, Wayne? No, uh, I mean, I mean that's that's exactly where I was going um, to start off the year. Oh yeah, there it is, right there. My bad. You yeah. know, I, I saw something yesterday. I watched the cold open of Steve Bannon's War Room. Not, I didn't listen to him. I just watched the. Just he 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 runs like a montage at the beginning of the show, mm-hmm. and it went from the earthquakes in Japan, film of the earthquakes in Japan. Mm-hmm. to film of the plane on the tarmac on fire in Japan, to all the Islamic Palestinian protesters in the United States and other Western cities in Germany and Italy. And then the scariest thing I saw in years, they go to camps in Arizona. I guess they were in Ar- either Arizona or Texas or something, probably Arizona. But there's like a whole squad of military age males and they're sharing one wife. What? And they asked where they were from, and they were all from Egypt. I saw it. I saw it. I, that well, terrified yeah. me, man. And I'm going to tell yeah. you why it terrified me. Because the guy that came out, if you remember, said those are guerrilla camps. Those aren't. Those aren't immigrants. Those are. Those are. They had yurts, which are like shelters that you can sleep in, semi permanent. They had a big campfire ring surrounded by rocks. It was organized, man. It was a camp, a guerrilla camp. And I realized that for our whole lives and several generations before us, we always said we were safe because the ocean separated us from everybody else. You know, it's been a mantra forever. You hear it in all corners of the country. They're here, man. They're here. There's going to be guerrilla warfare in our cities. Hopefully not. But Hopefully I mean, not. I can but it's set, it's set up to happen. Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it going that way. Uh, I saw a video too, and this is. How are you? Is this a matrimonio or family? Family. Uh, well, bienvenidos to San Antonio, Texas. Gracias. Quiere que te leo los documentos a ver qué dicen. Si no habla inglés, si no puede leer inglés. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Yo no soy abogado, pero debo decir lo que dice. No, quiero, quiero saber es cuando tengo la primera cita. So she wants to know when does she have the first date. So this is the notice to appear. You are uh, you are an arriving alien and you are, uh, so that's what they are. You are not a citizen, you're not a national, you're not a, you're a native of Venezuela. Uh, you applied for admission. Uh, you applied for admission in December of this year, so a few days ago, in Eagle Pass. Uh, the basis includes con- continuation page part of uh, you have a, una fecha, she has to appear in Dallas. Uh, in Dallas, Texas, see? ¿sí? Vas a Texas, se va a quedar aquí. Marzo 19 de 2029, 20, 20, tiene como unos siete años. She's got seven years to live within the country before she goes and meets a, a judge, an immigration judge. Got that, guys? Oh, Jesus. That's what we were talking about last week before we rolled out of here. But, yeah, I mean, just, just what you, I mean, about that wife thing, they didn't even look like they were married. If you, um, you know, she she looked like yeah, yeah, and you know, she you know didn't why? Even look like she knew the guy. You know why? You know what the plan is? American girls. Huh. Yeah. Well, that's a weapon the, of war. The way the way that American girls are today, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll go. They'll go. <laughs> they'll be like it's culturally enriching let's yeah. uh let's oh, mate with man. the illegal immigrants i'm i'm doing i'm doing it's my the, best it's diversity with him and him and him and him and him <laughs> <laughs> charlene yeah, no. nails it in seven years have seven anchor babies oh lord no it, it's um yeah you the way the way the way that these immigrants well, they're not immigrants. They're um, they're illegals. They're not immigrants. Immigrants know how to do it the right way. Migrants know how to do it the right way. And those two words by themselves is not what the I mean is what the media and Congress want you to believe that they are. So that they get a pass to go ahead and do the same thing. And it looks like it's um, backfiring. I mean, honestly, I think I might have said at the beginning that they were bringing these people in to vote for the Democrat Party. But after watching certain things and stuff, 
I kind of changed my mind about that, but I really haven't publicly talked about it because uh, uh, I don't like to say this. Uh, black Americans, um, Hispanic Americans, when you break it along down those roads, they're conservative in nature. Okay. Yep. So they're not going to vote. Democrat. They might not vote, but they're not going to vote Democrat. And, you know, the way that we talk about polls and stuff, um, the latest polls are showing that uh, Trump, not Republican Party, Trump is picking up support from the Hispanic uh, uh, vote and especially the Hispanic youth vote. And I saw something last week where uh, the uh, black Americans were uh, not interested in voting for Biden or the, the, the people that they polled that they would look toward a Trump or a third party candidate rather than to vote for Donald Trump. But when I saw this headline yesterday about more than 700,000 immigrants living illegally in California that are going to gain access, that's 700,000, man. 700,000. Oh, that That's, number is probably low, too. Yeah, exactly. And and then ICE, ICE report says that there are about 6 million. Last year, I think it was last year, not, not, but um, that uh, are in a waiting area, not, not physically, but their designations here in the United States, 6 million. Because they can't, it's a backlog. In Mexico, it's a backlog, yeah. yep. right, right, to, um, to get rid, um, to, um, to be taken care of. And then this, I watched, um, I got this from the Washington, uh, Washington Times last night. DHS is going to the Supreme Court to oh, ask wire. Texas, I mean, to ask the Supreme Court to, to make Texas to cut the razor wire. To cut, yep. to cut a barrier to stopping people from coming into their state. Hutch, talk I to don't me. Think, I don't think this is going to happen much longer. I think there's going to be, hopefully, I mean, it's, this is a hopeful thing, but at some point in time, there's got to be people in this country right now that are really getting muscled by this. I'm not one of them, right? Right. But there's got to be, for, that, for them to be that many people. Now, I've seen them in Walmart, and I've seen them on the street. Yeah. But they're not on my block. Right. You know what right. I mean? But at some point in time, they're going to be on your block. They're going to be on the block. Yep. And right. when that happens, I think that I think that we're reaching a time. We're, we're getting ready to reach a time. And this could get corrected in 2024. At the be, it, it, it could begin to be corrected in 2024. But I honestly feel that we're at, think of what they're doing to us. There's a whole political party. Actually, there's a party and a half. That's allowing this to happen. There, are, I mean, if you sit there and you think that the that the Republicans in the House of Representatives can't do something, yeah, they can. They can shut this government down and defund it, but they won't. You know, Mike Johnson is at a critical era, a critical point in his tenure right now. He just wrote a tweet saying that re they're going down to the Texas border. Republicans yeah. will continue advocating for real solutions. Yeah. You know what that means? They'll continue talking about it. Yeah, yeah, and 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 honestly, that's what that's what they're good at, Jay. They're good at talking about it, but they're not good at providing those solutions. And you have said many times, it's like they, I mean, they're they're uh, they're top. You know how you have a resume. Their their goal is to continue doing this and to make us angry, but somehow along the way. We have forgotten we have the power to boot them out of office to put some money in there to take care of the situation. They've scared the American people into a corner. I know, and and President Trump saw this in 2016. That's why he was talking about it's time to wake up the solid majority. He saw that Americans were tired, were, were were quiet. He saw that people were uh, um, running away, putting a blanket over their head. And he's like, y'all don't have to do that no more. Jump on this train and let's fix this thing. Jay, talk talk to me. I was gonna say the 
the difficulty is like today, a bunch of Republicans are heading down to the border. They're going to make videos. They're going to tweet about how awful it is. They're going to send out, you know, campaign emails saying donate because we need to stop the invasion. Mm -hmm. Hutch hit the nail on the head. They could stop it tomorrow. We're just not funding the government until not, not only do we secure the border, but we remove all these people from the country. They can go wait in some in Mexico or wherever they came from. They don't need to wait in America, but Republicans, I, I mean, it's just this continual thing where they, if they wanted to stop it, they could have, and they, they're choosing not to. The other thing that's important to understand is they don't need these illegals to vote because many of them are migrating to cities and localities that already vote blue. And so they'll get their congressional reps, their electoral college counts for those people without them voting. So if you if you layer on, and Thomas Massey actually introduced in the last couple of days uh, a congressional am or a amendment to the Constitution that said only U.S. citizens do you appropriate electoral college votes and members of the House of Representatives. It'll never pass. But Trump tried to do that on the census, identify who are citizens and non-citizens, and they called them racist, and they wouldn't let them do it. But, yeah. I mean, if you yeah, look, I've seen speculation where California's got like two or three extra members of the House of Representatives, primarily because of all the illegal immigrants. And Hutch, because, because we have great recording devices today and YouTube and Rumble and stuff like that, we can... We can put stuff like this together. at a time of the year where we're seeing more uh, at the border. And it's not unusual. Upwards of 12,000 migrants are still living here, waiting to be processed, waiting to see what happens to them after they crossed illegally into the country. And now to chaos erupting near the U.S.-Mexico border in Texas on Monday. The largest caravan in more than a year. An estimated 8,000 men, women and children in Chiapas, Mexico, near Guatemala. All of them headed north. Well, the migrant crisis is about to get even worse. Thousands of migrants were seen crossing the border into Brownsville last night. Apprehensions of migrants crossing the southern U.S. border are once again reaching record levels. This crisis is spiraled way out of control, and we are at the point of no return. Now that marks a second straight day of more than 10,000 apprehensions and is way up from an average of 6,000 a day in October. U.S. officials now warning that the situation is nearing a, quote, breaking point. Agents processed more than 10,500 migrants along the southern border Tuesday. Que hablamos de la crisis migratoria. The situation at the border worsens. The number of migrants in cities across the country are reaching record levels. Border Patrol is seeing record numbers as we approach the new year. The federal government has facilitated the worst border crisis that we have ever experienced in the country. A record number of migrants illegally crossing over. Several Texas border cities have declared states of emergency over concerns thousands of migrants will flood <laughs> ports of entries within days. A caravan <laughs> with reported 8,000 migrants now traveling through the southern Mexico to the north. We expect the news of Title 42 ending make more migrants want to come and arrive at the U.S.-Mexico border. Let me tell you something. I expect to see this in other countries, not the United States of America. It's I'm tragic. telling you that right now. This is tragic, man. I mean, dude, dude, hi, right, go. go. That Burkwan, Bur Burkwan, whatever his name is from, yeah, from he, yeah, he works over there. He's out on the border a lot, and he's he's been working this since it started. And he said yesterday, I or you know, a couple of days ago, that most people couldn't understand the scope of this. Right. In other words, there's so many people deep. That you've never seen. This is like Super Bowl crowds, right? Yep. Right, and, and more. Yeah. You know, well, and, yeah, and more. Yeah, just way more. just just to wrap up my last. Uh, I didn't really get to the point on my answer. I think mm -hmm. at some point, the people are going to surpass the government. And, and so the government is a very small entity. Right. There's so many more people than there are government government people. Exactly. And I think it's at some point you saw over the weekend. Finally, thank God, finally, 200 military officers wrote a letter demanding uh, that that senior military officials be held accountable for what they did during COVID, what they did to the troops. You saw that that's 200 people that 
they said, screw it, man. You know what? I'm, I don't care. To, I know what they're going to do, but I'm writing this down anyway. And I know so many people that are cheering for that. Uh, and, and now, now that military officials did that, now how about 10,000 cops coming out and denouncing the Capitol Police? How about 10,000 doctors coming out denouncing the medical establishment that pushed the vaccine? You know? I would like to see those military people also write for the border too. Half because, of them, half of them are running for Congress. Good. Because I mean, to me, to me right now, going into 2024, just like you said, just like we've been saying, is those the males that are coming across are so much of a military age. You know, they aren't little kids, y'all. And they're Even not though, trannies either. No, right. oh, oh heck no. No, well, I mean, here's what's scary too is even if you take the best case Democrat talking point, which is these are migrants, we deserve to bring them in and give them shelter. The fact is, take out all the other stuff, all the tears, all the all, all the military age men, take all that out. Mm-hmm. And the fact is, we can't afford to feed, house, pay for insurance for all these immigrants. Like, you can't have both a welfare system that pays everybody a bunch and millions and millions of people come in. It's it's just untenable. You have to limit the number of people that you bring in. And that's best case scenario for the Democrats. Go down all the other rabbit holes of the people that are coming in. And it's this does not end well for America. It just there's no there's no outcome. Before we before we move to our next um, topic, uh, y'all were talking about uh, some of the uh, Congress people going down to the border. Chip Roy was like, "I ain't going. I already know. I mean, I, I've been. He is, he is from Texas. Yeah, right. I mean, he's like, I already know. I already know about this stuff already. I mean, I already been down there. Uh, time is done for having these uh, press briefings at the border. We need to do something here. This is uh, this is from today." delegation of some 60 GOP House members to Eagle Pass, Texas, where the crisis again is at a breaking point. Bill Malusian, back on the story live from Eagle Pass. So, Bill, every time you return there, we say the words breaking point. It's broken already. Now we're just in a disaster. Yeah. Hey- I think we've used that word too, disaster, but, you know, I as we are, the numbers are record shattering. They're historic. And speaking of that delegation, it's going to be a show of force for Republicans about. Real quick, too. You remember there are there are a few times when I say Democrats like to do the historic thing. It might not be the right thing, but but they always like to do it. Uh, the history moment. First black president, first black female uh, vice president, first. Uh, oh, well, they stole that from they started from the Republicans about being um, for civil rights and stuff like that. But they like to do. Oh, oh yeah. Um, the first trans uh, <laughs> chief of staff or, you know, you know what I'm saying? They first like president, to be- first president with a mother on the Internet. <laughs> first president with a male husband. <laughs> Only they call her Michelle. So, uh, we, so back to illegal. 60 of them, House members, are going to be here in Eagle Pass today, one of the biggest delegations to ever visit the southern border. It's a little slow here in Eagle Pass this morning, but we'll show you what's going on over in Arizona, where we have a team on the ground. Take a look at this video. Before sunset last night, uh, we witnessed yet again another mass illegal crossing as people were coming through a breach in the border wall, and uh, hundreds of them started coming through, and they're coming in from all over the world. You'll see large numbers of men from Africa coming through, Senegal, Congo, need, really. Guinea, uh, uh, Liberia, others from Ecuador and Brazil as well. And there are five Republican House no, members bro. who are kind of branching yeah, off and well, doing bro. their own thing here in Eagle Pass today. Yeah, away from they, 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 they include Matt Getz, Andy Biggs, Bob Good, Eli Crane, and Matt Rosendale. They spoke to me about an hour ago telling me they are willing to shut this government down if this border isn't fixed. Take a listen. You know what? No, Just they're not. To- I know. I, exactly. You, you know, you're not. You, they're, they're part of it. Fox News gets up there and says, oh, this is a show of force. Yeah, right. Show of what? A bunch of old white dudes come down. A show of force. He keeps saying, oh, we're willing to shut the government down. 
And then like four times since they've had the house, which the Republicans won't even have the house in two months. No, they got another. They lost another guy today. Yeah, they lost another guy today. But but they say they want to shut the border, uh, shut the border down. Willing, willing. You had that chance in December. You didn't do it. We have here. We're going to have hearings. Blue ribbon committee. Right. (laughs) Check your email box. No more money for this bureaucracy. Uh, of his government until you've brought this border sh- uh, under control. Shut the border down or shut the government down. We are all, all committed to that. There, there, there is a national security issue that is being uh, taking place here on the southern border, and that's what it's going to take to to hold this administration accountable. You know what happens? Then there's, happens, a, uh, there's, then there's that tape. <laughs> you know what happens when you get in front of the camera? I don't know whether. I don't know whether y'all have, uh, I mean, and you probably have, but uh, when you're up on stage or when you're in front of a, a, a national camera, you feel regenerated. You feel like you can say whatever you want to say because you are bypassing all that and you can say whatever you want to say, no matter whether it's real or not, truth or truth or lie, you can get up there and then. And then when they turn the cameras off, whoo, okay, get me out of here. <laughs> get me out of here. I, I mean, it stinks. It stinks. Get up. Flies and stuff. Get me out of here. You know what I'm I saying? Was say, I wish there was a place we could bet on things like, <laughs> will they shut the government down or the border down? Well, there like, needs like, to be a bet, right. bet on yep. in the world. I mean, what right. kind of odds would you take on that? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And, and um, Matt, now I, I'm sure Matt had something to say back there too but these people look if they wanted to shut it down they would have shut it down they would have never opened it well exactly it wouldn't be open right now uh somebody asked one one section left to put in somebody asked me over the weekend well wayne what would you do i was like i said i would shut it down i would i would shut it down immediately then i would threaten congress somehow some way and I know it's hard to do that, but I would threaten Congress. Y'all are going to come up with a solution by the end of the week, or your pensions are getting taken away, your salaries are getting taken away, and we will shut down Congress in a week. I bet you they will come up with a solution for the border, and it will be bipartisan because they can't live without their money. And 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 I'm talking about all types of money. I'm talking about lobbyist money. I'm talking about all nothing. Their bank accounts are 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 are. You know what they do to terrorists? How they freeze? All their accounts are frozen for that week. I don't care what they. I don't, I don't care what they got to pay. I don't. I, guess what? I don't care about their families. Do something about the border, because they think it's a play. Uh, 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 they think it's a joke. You know, they go down to the border, they do this little quick video and stuff, and then they turn around to go back to D.C., and then they go hang out in their little posh places and drink their um, uh, uh, their uh, uh, $4,000, $5,000 bottles of scotch um, and um, do their little uh, um, naked parties and stuff. We're tired. We're tired of hearing about that mess. We're tired. How about the guy in New York that didn't pay his rent on his $45,000 a month Rental gold Goldman Santos brought it and busted it out. Oh, really? Yeah, the guy, the guy's like uh $180,000 behind in rent, and his rent's $45,000 a month. Dang. That's like what most people make in a year, right? Dang. How do you even what do you get for $45,000 a month? Damn, that's a well, lot. New York, though. It, I mean, yeah. yeah it, is New York, so here we go. Well, and now New York. I mean, imagine what's going to happen in New York in the next twelve months, as they just keep sending more and more people in there, and they Isn't keep even, giving them more and more guaranteed services and more and more. Be hotels. a cold winter. Is that even? Is that even going to be New York in the next? Is it going to be New York? <laughs> right. <laughs> New York. It's going to be New Arriba, York. Arriba, Arriba, the, is, Arriba. the Islamic city of New York. Yeah, the, Islam, the, the Islamic, the new Islamic capital of the United States of America. The holy city of New York. <laughs> right? 
And honestly, I don't know if these guys are going to launch a terror attack because right now they're just living for free. They're like, we're living in New York. That's what I was thinking. What if it all backfired on them? What if all of a sudden all these immigrants said, no, we're not going to tear this place up. We, we came here because we love it. Yeah. Yeah. They got me in a hotel. They're giving me thousands of dollars a month. They're giving me free insurance. I'm not having to work. I get to complain about the quality of the food. Mm -hmm. I get to, you know, this is great. It's almost almost 